Good evening and welcome back to Gargoyle Manors, the Monster Museum. I am your internet horror host, Bobby the Monster, along with my faithful companion and friend, Boris the Buzzard. And you're here, I'm sure, ready to see Monster Movie Night. A yet another film from our vault of horror from the ages that's long ago. And of course, we try to... Um, avail you of these wonderful little tidbits. Isn't that right, Boris? Of course we do here at uh, the Monster Museum, Gargoyle Manor. And I, and, uh, and in fact, in league with that particular theme, I was digging out some of my um, nightmare homes, you might could say. Everyone's got one of those, I'm sure they do, that they dream about or have nightmares about. And, and would just love to move into and have. And this is one of uh, ours. One of my favorites is the Psycho House from Psycho, Norman Bates's house. And of course, it's a model. And of course, we always keep it dusty, nice and dusty, so that it would be the right element. And keep it re-glued and repainted every so often here at the uh, museum. And in fact, that's one of the little as I can say, our little nightmare houses. Uh, a house of evil, I suppose you could say, right? Right, uh, Boris? <laughs> In fact, that's what sometimes uh, Gargoyle Manor has been called, the house of evil. Of course, there's, there's nothing further from the truth. Uh, we're not evil here. We just like to have a good time on the uh, dark side of life. <laughs> and, of course, being a monster, a nym, we, uh, we love our moonlight, full moon masquerades, and, and of course, lots of other wonderfully ghouly things. Speaking of ghouly things, the movie tonight is called House of Evil. I've been leading up to it all, all evening, haven't I? Yes, House of Evil, starring Boris Karloff. In fact, this is one of Karloff's last films. Uh, yes, before he uh, went to that great mausoleum in the sky, as they say, to haunt and will forever scarify the uh, people wherever they are up there, or up or below or in between or someplace, right? <laughs> we won't get into that old debate, will we? But anyway, it's a great film. It's one of his last films, but it's uh, also was made in Mexico. And uh, it's not in Mexican or Spanish. You could, it's actually in English, so you can understand it for those of you who don't speak bilingual uh, uh, t talk. means if you can't understand Spanish. Of course, if you can't understand English, I'm sorry about that. Uh, so it's, you know, we can't have it all, can we? No, no. <laughs> in fact, I think someone sounds like out there that they're trying to get in to the museum and wanting to see the film right quick. Well, we're not going to do anything quickly here. We love to take our time. In fact, let us get going here with Boris Karloff in The House of Evil. And let's see what sort of things he collects in his house. Hmm? <laughs> we'll see you a little later. Enjoy. Get ready for The House of Evil with Boris Karloff. Take it away.
eyes like the other girl we found at the lake. The eyes? But, but it states here clearly that the, the police believe the eyes were, were devoured by fish. And the other time, they were supposed to be birds. Vultures, they said, had attacked the body, which had lain for hours in fields, etc., etc. The police are not such fools. They know they have a dangerous maniac on their hands, but they don't want to start a panic, like there was in Vienna. Vienna? Oh, but Emery, surely that could be a coincidence. You have known stranger things happen in your life. And birds have been known to, and fish, well, everybody knows that fish. If you believe that, you would not be getting so upset. Now, sit down, Matthias. Let me give you something to relax you. Ah, oh, no, don't you try to doctor me, doctor. I am disgustingly healthy, as you well known, a condition that I attribute to my lifelong aversion to doctors. So keep your pills and your needles for your regular patients. They need them. Oh, Emery, what I need is a friend. A good friend. I have only one. Then, uh, as your friend, Matthias, I insist. Oh. Matthias. Well, I didn't want to tell you before because I wasn't sure then, but uh, that other time, I myself examined the body. There was no doubt, Matthias. Any medical student could have seen that the eyes were torn from the body by nothing other than human fingers. What are we to do? My good friend, you know what must be done. No. No, Emily. No. Before long, there will be another no. and another. Then someone will remember what happened in Vienna. And Budapest. Budapest. There will be an investigation. They will come here with their questions and their newspapers. Just like with your brother Hugo. Hugo? But, but that was so long ago. Who would remember? The police keep files on these things, Matthias. It is only a matter of time. Yes. Yes, there's very little time. Emmerich, did you hear that? That was my father's favorite clock. Uh, you remember it? It ran down and stopped at the very instant that he died. Shall I make the necessary arrangements. Yes, yes. Fodor will drive you to the city. Somewhere in our garden, father, the evil weed has sprung up again. If God will give me strength in the twilight of my life, I promise you that I will find that weed and tear it from our soil with all its evil seed. Once and for all. Erdish. Kurdish. Never heard of it. A Romani dialect. Erds are a sort of mountain gypsy people who have always kept so much to themselves that they've become almost legendary. I recognize the characters, but I don't know of anybody who could read this. 
It would have to be sent to Bucharest, perhaps, or to Athens. I'm quite sure that there are no Erds living within a thousand kilometers of here. Except perhaps for a few living in the city, like the girl who had this letter. Wait a minute. There was something that other girl had. Let me get the file. Can you think of any reason why a murderer would single out a girl like this? No, except as I recall, the Erds are a very violent sort. They're always having vendettas. Here it is. Look at this, Professor. Yes. You see, it is the same, Erdish. Definitely. The other victim, a young lady, was also found wearing this. Professor, do you think both of these women may have been victims of some private vendetta? Of course, I'm not a policeman like you gentlemen, but I think that would be likely. Then it's clear that we are not dealing with a homicidal maniac after all. This is an affair of family honor. Do you agree, Charles? Yes, sir. So it would appear. Thank you, Professor Frank, for your valuable assistance. Not at all, if there's anything I can do. Good day. Good day. Well, Charles, it appears that the danger is not as serious as we had imagined. No, sir. But, uh, what about the eyes? No doubt a barbaric sort of signature or trademark. I recall something similar in Sicily. The members of one of the families engaged in a vendetta would cut off the ears of their victim and send them as a warning to the members of the opposing clan. That such a thing could happen today, in the 19th century. Making me feel awfully funny. I was just remembering the other night. Shh. What if someone heard? I would arrest them for eavesdropping. Charles, I have to go away for a few days. Will you come with me to Moorhenge? Moorhenge? Yes. It's supposed to be a fabulous place. The home of my great uncle, Matthias Morthwald. They say he's unbelievably wealthy. And no one's heard a word from him for years and years. It's all very mysterious. And uh, you have been invited to go? It's a sort of a family reunion or something. Mr. Mortwald wants to meet his heirs in person. Hmm. Maybe he wanted to decide to whom he should uh, leave all this unbelievable wealth. That seems to be the implication. <laughs> I hadn't counted on marrying a wealthy heiress. I don't know if I like the idea. First, I should be a full inspector, not just an assistant. And uh, I'll never get there if I take a vacation right in the middle of an important case. Charles, I don't want to go alone, please. Miss Lucy Duran, I presume. That's right. I'm Charles Beasler, and Miss Duran is my fiancée. Fiancée? But, sir, I'm afraid you were not expected. The master's made no plans for strangers. May I take your bags, Miss Duran? My good man, let me assure you that I shall not move from this spot unless escorted by Mr. Beasler. If your master objects, then please convey my regrets. 
And tell us when we might expect the train back to the city. May I congratulate you, sir, on your choice of this woman? Thank you, um... Fedor. I am called Fedor. Fodor. Yes. Well, we shall go then. The master will decide. Strange people. They look rather familiar. Like something I've seen in a dream or a picture book. Miss Durand. my dear. You think you interrupted my music? Uh, but in fact, the composition goes no further. It is the song of my life. And as yet, my muses have not blessed me with its final coda. But that's soon, Emmerich, huh? Soon. I have no doubt, Matthias. How do you do? I'm Dr. Emery Horvath. Mr. Mortavall's physician. Ah, oh, no, my friend, Emmerich, my friend. I have no need of medicine. As you can see. <clears throat> Sir, may I present myself? I am... Morgan, Sir Mortavall. Did you know your voice was exactly like your father's? Hmm, well, I would have expected a successful banker to appear in clothing that did not look so warm. Tell me, 
Do you count your gold pieces at night in some secret room? Your great uncle Hugo was like that, you know. Sir, I beg your pardon. I'm far from wealthy, I assure you. Quite to the contrary, as a matter of fact. <laughs> you appear to be protesting a great deal. And... Oh. This must be my dear, sweet, baby cousin Cordelia Mortevart. The years have not dealt kindly with you, my dear. Rash, cousin Matthias. Madam Rash. Oh, of course I forgot. Forgive me. Madam Rash. I'm told your late husband fled to the grave as the only refuge against your continual nagging. Fortunately, he left you quite well off. Oh, not at all. Cousin, you're most unkind. My husband often said that without me, he would never have accomplished what he did. Of course, of course. Your Uncle Hugo was a great hypocrite, too. I am Ivor. At your service. Yes. Ivor Mortimer. Oh, you have his eyes exactly. Hugo's eyes. Did you know that your father's dying words cursed you in the foulest terms? <laughs> he cursed me for his own sins. And? And because I always win at cards. He always lost. <laughs> he disinherited you? I do all right. Huh. And Lucy Durant. Did you know that your dear mother lived within these walls? Did you know my mother? Can you tell me something about her? Of course, my dear, I'd be glad to. She died in a lunatic asylum. No! It's not true. In a hospital. He died mad. Just like Hugo. There's something of Hugo in all of you. Who is this intruder? He's not one of us. <clears throat> but I hope to be. Very soon, sir. How oh, foolish of you. Well, you realize you can't stay here. This is a private family affair. Uncle Matthias, please. You must consider Charles as one of the family. Oh, that would be much too dangerous for him. Dangerous? Yes. Moorhenge has a mind of its own, a soul of its own. It can love, it can hate. But it'll never tolerate strangers. <laughs> Surely, sir, you can't believe... A superstition, if you like, but one that I intend to enforce with every means at my command. Fogel! Make arrangements for suitable accommodations in the village for this gentleman. At then, once. Then I regret to say that I must leave also. No, no, you cannot, you cannot. Uh, Miss Lucy. May I suggest, uh, uh, this meeting will be quite brief. Uh, it'll be a matter of 24 hours, uh, or 48 at the most. If your host's behavior seems strange to you, uh, grant him the courtesy of his years. This will be your uncle's last chance to see his remaining kin. And there are many pleasant memories of your mother within these walls. You want to stay, don't you? Just for one day, until tomorrow. With a little patience, I am sure that your visit here will be amply rewarded. Dr. Horvath is quite right, as usual. I see that I've hurt you. I'm sorry. Forgive me, my... My bitterness comes from within. I think it will be all right. Yes, 
I understand. Fodor, let's go. Excuse me, but uh, Mr. Mortavall has to rest for a while. Yes, yes. Uh, I'll join you all later at supper. If, if you need anything, just speak to the servants. Morehenge is yours while you're here. Charles. I'll come for you tomorrow. I must say the old boy exceeds even the worst I've ever heard about him. Hmm. Don't fool yourself. He's deliberately been as unpleasant as possible in order to test us. Do you really think so? It's quite obvious. Maybe. Ivor, who's this Hugo he mentioned? Oh. Hugo. <laughs> There was a gem of a fellow. He was the one of Matthias' four brothers chosen to carry on the traditional family vocation. <laughs> chosen quite rightly, too, by old Karl Maria Morteval himself. You see, the choice turned out to be a curse. Hugo came to a most unfortunate end. <laughs> A shrinking of the brain, a rare disease which attacks only those of exceptional intellect. Is it true? Is it really true? <laughs> oh, yes. And it brings about a strange behavior in its victims, too. <laughs> in what way strange? Oh, in Hugo's case, he began to feel as if everyone was staring at him. He saw eyes everywhere, eyes staring at him, hating him, he thought. Soon he felt an irresistible compulsion to lash out and destroy these evil eyes which seemed to threaten his existence. Finally, he had been staring intently at his own image in a mirror for hours. Many, many hours. Staring at his own eyes in a mirror. Finally, when he could stand it no longer, with his own fingers, he... Uh, uh, <laughs> Hugo lived for a year after that in a coma. <laughs> His brain steadily shrinking and shrinking until with a great peaceful smile on his face, he was no more than a barely living vegetable by this time. What is this family vocation you mentioned, Ivor? I never heard of that before. Toys. Toys? Mm-hmm. For children? No. <laughs> These toys were created for the entertainment of kings and maharajas who often paid fabulous fortunes for them. <laughs> Come with me. This is my favorite. It is called Anne Boleyn. Uh, where do you come from, Fodor? 
I uh, don't recognize your language. From Moorhedge, Master Charles. I was born there. My people have lived there for many years. Your people? Yes. They came down from the mountains long ago. And the great Baron Mortwald was kind enough to give them refuge from their enemies. But for him and his descendants like the Master Carl, we would not exist today. But even so, there are not many left. The younger ones wander off. Who knows where? To the cities, no doubt. Yes. They no longer have the feeling for the soil. And uh, Dr. Horbath, is he one of you? Only half, Master Charles. Only half. And the other half? Mortwald. But it is not enough. Not enough for what, Fodor? He thinks Fodor is stupid, but he is wrong. I know more than he imagines. What, Fodor? What do you know? Don't worry, Master Charles. No harm will come to the Mortwalds, as long as Fedor lives. Now, I've said enough. Here! Fodor, you will bring Miss Lucy tomorrow without fail, huh? Yes, tomorrow. A brothy. you want? A horse. A very fast horse. Uh-huh. Come through here, will you please? Don't be afraid. They are simply toys. However, it is said that in the past our family had the secret to make them evil. Criminals capable of killing on command. Hugo and then Matthias knew how to control them from a distance without anyone suspecting. <laughs> In other words, we belong to a family who makes ingenious and murderous toys. Imagine, toys handled diabolically by our ancestors to kill and destroy. It has to be a fantasy. Only a fantasy, like the one in Hugo's eyes. <laughs> the great wealth of our ancestors came from these incredible toys. <laughs> were bought by kings and maharajas for their amusement. Yes, for their own amusement, to eliminate their enemies. <laughs>
as Matthias has never confided in anyone, the secret of how to handle the toys will die with him. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mortaball has asked me to inform you that we shall dine in exactly one hour. The servants will show you the way. Let's find out. Brethren, brethren, and quats. Get the bar. Get the bar. again there was a, an accident a terrible accident matthias with the horses and the poor thing he fell into the flying hoofs oh my god please please uh, he'll be all right in a moment uh, can't you all leave us alone please give him air Faithful. Why should it be he? Why, Emmerich? Why? It's the madness, Matthias. Who can understand it? It's my fault. I brought them here. I should have known. No, you must not put the blame on yourself. Neither of us could have known how far advanced the illness had become. You're right. We must act quickly. And I think we both know... Yes, yes, I know, but... Uh, we must be very careful. God forgive us if we were mistaken. I'm afraid Mr. Mortavall has had a heart attack. 
a very serious one. May I help, Doctor? Thank you, Miss Duran, but it won't be necessary. The servants are accustomed to these things. Uh, there's one thing, Miss Duran. May I have a word with you for a moment? Why, certainly. The servants suspect you're a young man of murdering Fodor. Charles? Uh-huh. And Fodor was, uh, like their father. Their chief, so to speak. They're in a nasty mood. A dangerous one, I might say. So I advise you to lock yourself in your room and remain there. Yes, of course I will. Enjoyed the film so far? Yes, The House of Evil with Boris Karloff. In fact, if you've gotten to the point, which I'm sure you have, we've found out that Karloff is playing not only a wonderful pianist but, or organist, but also a toy maker. And in fact, I can't make toys myself, but I do collect them here at Gargoyle Manor. And I collect monster toys, like the ones that you can see behind me, the life sized ones, the animatronics, the models, all the ones that make music and dance a little bit. And here, you know, we, we can have a little bit of the, the monster mash. Oh, there we go. In fact, he's... Oh, it is the monster mash. Look at that. monsters there singing their favorite hit tune, the Monster Mash. Well, of course, as we have seen so far in the House of Evil, their uh, toys are sort of monsters in themselves coming to life and attacking people like that. So it makes you think about when you go to the old museums and places like that where the, that have old toys and life-size and small ones that move about. Makes you wonder, what are they doing when you're not there? Mm -hmm. So, you better be respectful to them when you go back to see them. Yes, I always am. I always pay my respects to the toys in every how old house that I see. Especially if it's a museum. Especially if it's a monster museum. Anyway, I'm glad that you're enjoying House of Evil with Boris Karloff. One of his last films, Made in Mexico. And I'm glad you got to come here to Gargoyle Manor, the Monster Museum, to visit with us for Monster Movie Night. And let's get back to our film, shall we? And while I dust up a few of these toys. All right, let's get ready. Back to the film we go.
Charles. I'm sorry I had to frighten you. But I have no intention of leaving you alone in this place. There's reason to believe you're not entirely safe here. I'm so glad you're here. But you're the one who's in danger. The servants think you killed Fodor. Fodor? What happened to him? Oh, it was awful. The carriage came back and he was dead. You could have been seen out there. I have to have a look around. Don't worry. I know how to take care of myself. You keep yourself locked in. Yes, I will. Charles, be careful, please. There's something evil about this place. a death young man why are you here dr. Horbath there seems to be a bit of a misunderstanding among your friends here would you kindly tell them the meaning of this I see however you do not have any jurisdiction here inspector Bresler what is to take place at Moorhenge now is far too important to allow your interference here. For your own safety, I must insist upon your confinement. Until morning, at least. Idibishnya. This all may seem unusually rude, young man, but when you learn the reason, I'm sure you'll understand. I will, Doctor. Good night. Good night.
wonder what's happening. We have heard nothing for over an hour. But Horvath is with him. He hardly had a chance to get to know us. The better for him. Dr. Horvath won't let us in this morning. But a servant brought him pen and paper. Matthias Mortavall is no more. Will you please follow me? Peacefully. What do we do now, Doctor? Mr. Mortaball gave me quite explicit instructions. He had you invited here for a very specific purpose which has been accomplished. This morning he wrote his last will and testament, knowing that he was making sure of his heirs for the purpose. There will be an immediate funeral, and after an appropriate period of mourning, the will shall be read. Then, uh, after that, reservations for going back to the city will be available.
They say that evil has fallen upon the land. They are all going back to the mountains. In view of this unforeseen development, I think it best that we dispose of our business tonight so that you may all leave in the morning, if you wish. dance in chic. Uh, I wonder if it works. Come on. Come on. Try it. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, no. oh, come on. <laughs> like this. On his neck, please. <laughs> and what do I do now? Now? Dance! <laughs> beautiful. Just beautiful. <laughs> I must say, he has a strong lead. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's too fast. Slow it down. Slow it down. Yes. I don't know how. It's too fast. Slow it down. Stop the thing, Ivor. <laughs> Stop it. But, but, but there is no way. You were out of step, my dear. I'm tired of these monstrous things. I'll be in my room. <laughs> Did you get frightened?
key, Doctor. Where is it? It is with Matthias on a chain around his neck. Then we'll have to go and get it. You would desecrate the dead. <laughs> Impossible. Nonsense. There is some sort of hoax going on here. I've suspected it from the start. <laughs> you must be mad. Furthermore, I have reason to suspect an attempt on my life. Therefore, I shall take steps to defend myself. I must insist you produce the key to this room, Doctor. Very well. Come with me. You first. What's that noise? I don't hear anything. Music. Oh, it's the same that Uncle Matthias played last night. Music. That someone is going to die. It's almost there. No. No. Make it stop. Make it stop. <laughs> Quickly, it's Cordelia. I don't see it. It's under his shirt, next to his heart. Doctor, come quickly, please. It's Cordelia. Get it. it seems. She's fainted. Help me take her to the couch. did he go? I don't know. I'll see if I can find him. Cordelia seems to be all right. All right, go ahead. Charles! 
Charles. <gasps> what are you doing? There's no one. They've all returned for the mountains. But there are other things. Evil things. You must stay within the walls of Moorhenge tonight. Yes, Doctor. I understand. I don't trust Horbath. No. I don't either. How do we know he won't substitute a false will or... A... Or try to get everything for himself somehow. Yes, exactly. I think we should read it now. So we can get out of this awful place. Upstairs. Morganster? must have been staring straight into the muscles when they went off. It's Dr. Horvath. He's trying to kill all of us. Yes, undoubtedly. All of us. What are you going to do, Ivor? Find him. I suggest you girls lock yourselves in your own rooms. Don't worry about me. Cordelia, don't you think we should stay together? This is like an awful nightmare. No, I don't trust anybody. I'm sorry, Miss Durand. Nothing personal, you understand?
Harvis? Dr. Harvis? Cordelia? Cordelia? Cordelia?
to appear it was Dr. Horvath.
Charles, it's been a nightmare. The others are all dead. And that awful thing, was it alive or just another? I don't know. Nothing's certain in this place, but we'll find out. Charles, I thought you might be dead. That whore bath had me locked up in a... Never mind, let's go. There's someone else in the house. Dr. Horvath? Maybe. I can't believe that Sudavama was a machine. It could see me. Charles, let's get away from here now. Anything can happen. All right. But I want to have a look at that thing in the armor first. Come on. What about the old man, Matthias? He died this morning, and then the organ played. That's all it was, see? Yes. But the organ, it was playing the same piece that Matthias played when we came here. What about Morgenstern? Dead. Killed by another toy. And the servants? They're gone. They left when Matthias died. They said there was evil here and they were right. Did Horbath say that? Yes. He seemed to be the only one who knew their language. Yeah, that language. And I think I know what it is, too. Come on. The armor's disappeared. We shall try to save you, Doctor. It's a fatal one. No. Ich bin da. No. Let me see. No. No. Uh, it's no use. Ich bin nicht true. What did he say? I don't know. It was in Erdish. Erdish? The language of the servants. The pieces of the puzzle are all here. But I can't quite... The puzzle? 
Yes, the case that I've been investigating. This is the murderer. But something is missing. Let's proceed. That would be the organ we heard. But who was playing it? The first time Horvath was there with the rest of us. Maybe some kind of mechanism. Like a music box. Here, look at this. Why, that's Matthias. It's a mold. For a wax dummy. Then Matthias is not... Why, Emmerich, my old friend, you too. Oh, I'm afraid our plans have gone somewhat awry, have they not? Charles, he's mad. Good evening, Cousin Lucy. Oh, I see you have your young friend with you. What a pity. But then sometimes the innocent must suffer with the guilty. Life is so cruel, is it not? Listen, Mortibald. We can help you. You need a doctor. Doctor? Yes. But I'm in perfect health, as you can see. Doctors, 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 I need none. Cousin Lucy, I have the end at last. The sum of my life has been completed. The final chords are all up here, waiting to be performed. But where? Where shall I begin? What, what do you mean by suffer with the guilty? Who's guilty? Of what? Hugo. Poor Hugo. I knew it as soon as I looked into her eyes. You, you mean Lucy? Oh, such a pretty face, too. What a pity. Now I see. Charles, he thinks that I inherit Uncle Hugo's madness. He thinks that I'm... You killed Fodor. My gentle Fodor. Emmerich only wanted to make sure... Oh, poor Emmerich, if only he had asked me, because I knew from the eyes, always the eyes. Hugo believed that everyone who looked at him had the evil eye, and he had the compulsion to... Listen, Mortibald. That is not true. Do you understand? Horbath killed Fodor and the others. He tried to kill Lucy. This business of the eyes was all a trick to persuade you to help him to get rid of the direct heirs so he might keep the estates for himself it's all right here in your will yes Emmerich and I have made a mess of things but now the time has come to set everything right just as I promised my father. Oh, forgive me, Cousin Lucy. It is better this way, believe me. You are evil, but the fire will purify your immortal soul. Not see the end. 
we should all be purified. The curse of the eyes. Let me go! My beloved toys will go with me, with my beautiful serenade. And to all the house will also go with me. All will be purified. We succeeded in escaping from that hell. Poor Matthias. He became the victim of his insanity. Let's get out of here. certainly is. I do hope you all enjoyed it. I was getting myself a little bit of a gothini here from our brand new decanter, a skull decanter, where you keep all your wonderful effluvial liquids and tasties into. In fact, we got that from our store, Gothic Charms, as well as you can get one too while they last. Anyway, I, uh, Boris is retired for the evening and uh, in fact, we've got all the toys all back in their place on their shelves and all wound down. And I see that the movie's toys has been wound down as well. My goodness, what an ending. Fire is the worst enemy to any type of collection. I do hope everyone will be careful in the future. And uh, I know I always am. We keep those fire extinguishers and we also keep our, our fellow creatures here with an eye out. Sometimes we need to put that back in there sometimes, but an eye out is not too bad when looking for hazards like that. But I'm so glad that you got to come and visit with us this evening again and enjoy another Boris Karloff film. Uh, it was actually made in 1968, I believe, but actually wasn't seen until 1978, a long while after Mr. Boris uh, had, uh, had passed away, it would seem, for reasons unknown. Of course, that's movie biz for you, isn't it? Uh, show biz. And in fact, well, I hope you all will join me in a toast and a, a, a gostini and share. And I, I drink to you, my friends, for coming out to Monster Museum, the Gargoyle Manor, to watch our monster movie night with us. And in fact, I can hear some of the creature crawlies wanting to get in for the night as well. So, until next time, keep screaming. Thank you.